Hey guys, how's it going? Michael Troy here, and we have a fun one today. I mean, they're all fun, but this is kind of more fun because it is Keith Giffen, Trencher versus Superman. Okay, so everybody loves Trencher. Trencher was like part of the second wave of uh, Image Comics back in the 90s, and um, it's Keith Giffen doing this like radical style with this cool ass character. Sort of like, I don't know, I guess it's giving me, um, what's his name, Lobo kind of vibes, because, you know, he's foul-mouthed and just kind of crazy or whatever. So anyway, uh, Keith Giffen is a, you know, like a legend as far as writing. He plotted in, um, you know, the Justice League International, like the comedy one, and he's just a legion of superheroes. Um, apparently he had some controversy, um, he started out, uh, he did, he did, you know, he, he did a lot of art. He started out more of like a Kirby clone and then he switched his style and sort of basically totally ripped off this Argentinian artist named Jose Munoz. And then later he would develop this sort of trencher style. So artistically he's sort of been all over the place, but it's all cool, so it doesn't matter. Anyway, we're gonna compare some of this art we're gonna start, let's start with the Superman, cause this is, this is like, uh, pretty much like after the burn era, um, when Roger Stern took over writing. This is a George Perez cover, um, cause he was on Action Comics, and it is cool, cause of course it's George Perez, one of my favorite artists, and so good, right? But this is a uh, guest illustrated by Keith Giffen, and, um, if you want to see the artist I'm talking about, look up Jose Munoz. You'll be shocked how much it really looks just so much like this. But, you know, I mean, the the comic book world is full of art clones and swipes. And, I mean, depending on how egregious it is, it's like, um, um, it's sort of, I don't know. I, you know, it's like, it's just a part of the culture. A lot of artists start out, you know, just copying other artists until they develop their own style. And a lot of artists become popular because they remind you of another artist. And I mean, God knows, I, I you know, like, uh, for example, like Vic Bridges on Freak Force, his style is very similar to John Byrne. And that's part of the reason I loved it. But then I wound up becoming a fan of his, um, you know, because as much of an, as an artist can be a clone, they still have their own aesthetic, their own brain, their own style. It's just gonna come through somehow. I'll be curious to see. Okay, so Keith Giffen is like the guest plotter. This is like very Keith Giffen with this nine panel grid, very like Watchmen. Keith Giffen is like, um, when he worked with Kevin McGuire on um, Justice League. He's, I think that he's one of those writers who's just very visual. So he doesn't write actual plots. He does layouts. Like he would lay out the book and then Kevin would draw it from that, you know, changing whatever he wanted to according to, you know, camera angles and stuff like that. But I think that's interesting. And this art is like really super cool. So Roger Stern is scripting. Keith Geffen is guest plotter and penciler. Dennis Jonke is the anchor. I like Dennis Jonke. Um, he, I can't think of who he's worked with, but um, you know, he's been around forever and he's great. Bill Oakley, letterer, Glenn Whitmore, colorist. John Peterson, associate and Mike Carlin, editor. How funny, um, Mike Carlin was fired by Jim Shooter. I guess he took a lot of flack from it, but um, I think it made Mike Carlin a better editor because he came over to DC and did some good things on Superman. I just love this like Keith Giffen art. It's a lot of fun. It's very kind of pulpy to me, which is also like Jose Munoz's style. I remember like not liking this art back in the day. Like um, it just looked really gross and ugly to me. I liked, you know, bright, shiny, open art like uh, detailed art, like George Perez and John Byrne and Art Adams and all those guys. But it's funny how your taste changes and develop as you get older and um, you gain appreciation for 
other things, you know, like subtleties in art and just like one thing, you know, just like the nuts and bolts and the mechanics of art is just um, uh, what excites me, you know, like just noticing like the use of how someone spots their blacks, their use of negative space, their storytelling, you know, the good rule. I repeat a lot of the things I say, but it's standard and stands true and can't be stated enough the importance of, you know, the uh, the way comics work and comic storytelling and just like uh, being faithful and just honoring the art form. You know, you should be able to tell relatively what's going on by just like looking at a page and not reading the words. This is so cool. I mean, it seems lazy. Uh, to just do all these silhouettes, but it's so effective at the same time. You know, it's like the Superman's like the big blue Boy Scout. So he's such a bright character. I've always loved Superman. Of course, I fell in love with him because of the Christopher Reeve movie. You know, I had a Superman cake and just, I've just always loved him. What's not to love? He's the first best superhero, but it's really cool to see. Um, and is this, I want to say this is post- this is post Dark Knight, yeah. So this could be like a Frank Miller influence, perhaps. But I just think it's cool. I love it. There's like nine million panels across the pages. This is, see, this is right here is an argument for um, hard, hard or floppy, whatever physical comics as opposed to digital comics because not only do they make that cool noise when I turn the page, but you know, to be able to see like the pages next to each other and just like have your eye bring it all together. I just love the art form of comics and it is so cool. I can't wait to get to Trencher, but I'm really enjoying this uh, old school Keith Giffen. It's just like such a different style than like I would ever try to draw or normally be attracted to. I think I was collecting Superman because of uh, action comics because of George Perez at the time so of course I had to get the fill-in issue and I'm so glad I still have it because it is really freaking cool these nine panel grids are kind of fun at first like uh, I think Watchmen was the first time I ever encountered that like on such a, a consistent basis and it seemed almost claustrophobic at first but I mean, it's such a great storytelling device. And now comic books have like one or two pages, panels on a, one or two panels on a page and, you know, two to four maybe. And just, they try to be really cinematic and there's just something fun. You know, it just looks like a comic strip. You know, it's like you're getting more bang for your buck. Like you have to sit down and just actually physically read this. So, and then he gives you this great, awesome, like, splash page right there so there's that but this is cool clone or not rip off or not i really enjoy this style i think it's cool and i did flip through so that was action comics and we'll see so this is in 19 did i say it was 89 because then um yeah 1989 because then here comes Trencher from Image, part of like the second wave of uh, Image here. And this is 1993. So this is like four years later. And what an evolution. First of all, instantly noticeable is that we're now, you know, we've moved into the better paper, the better printing, the more computer looking colors. Created, written, and drawn by Keith Giffen, colored and lettered by Laverne Kinzierski. Shout out to Laverne Kinsierski. He's like an industry veteran. Like I've always enjoyed his colors. I think he's a true talent. Um, but this style is just so different. It's like, this is sort of like the darker image style, I guess. Like, um, I don't know, is this because of, like who, where did he get this style? Is this like coming from Simon Bisley? But I like it cause it's so, like gritty and grimy, but it's, there's no like black. So it's like really open, but it's got all this great like details and just, I don't know, it's just a lot of fun. It's almost, uh, 
European in a way. You know, I'm feeling like Jeff Darrow and just sort of like hard boiled, um, which was not a European bug, but you know, Jeff Darrow is a European artist, so there. But I mean, these characters are just crazy. I just love this art. For Trencher is just like a fun book. Like it's just sort of nonstop crazy in your face. It's so great to like, I mean, you would never guess in a million years if I handed you these two books and you didn't read comics, like you you would never guess in a million years that it's the same artist. But I see a lot of the same sort of sensibility and like the panel layouts and the pacing of the storytelling and just like the way he does, like, you know, this sort of shows like how he would do a profile. I don't know, that's sort of, speaks of his art, if you will. <laughs> this is so funny. And this is why it's so Lobo in a way, because it's just like so, I don't know, raunchy. And just, I love that he gets out of the shower and he's like, there's just a little sign over his crotch that says, sorry, gals. <laughs> like, so stupid, right? What a great little, I love this. Like, this is so much fun. This art is so cool. I wish I had the other issues to go through right now, but hey. We can do a sequel, right, guys? Don't call it a comeback. <laughs> I'm also wondering if something like this is sort of like a, a nod to, like, you know, Rob Liefeld and sort of like the image artist with the nine million teeth in the mouth. <laughs> Hilarious. I'm totally digging this art. I might just have to start ripping off this style just for the fun of it, because it is so cool. It just looks, I mean, this is just a fun book. The colors are like so, like it totally pops and just like, this is like eye candy for sure. Visual candy for the soul. It's like Skittles on paper and wow, how cool is that? Um, Supreme, no thanks to Rob Liefeld. Um, and I don't mean that as a dig, but um, it's just like such a cool character. I mean, who didn't love like Alan Moore's Supreme and then Eric Larson took over and like that is such a great page right here. How dope would it be to own the original art of this? I would just love to see that in person. I'm calling for a Trencher artist edition. Like they should do artist editions, artist editions in case you don't know. But if you're watching this video, you probably do know because no one else would really care. But uh, IDW prints these really cool, like, uh, artist editions, and they're the print, they're printed from the original artboards, and it's just, you get to see everything. Just like uh, the art and its full size glory at the original size, like 11 by 17. Next, Supreme. I want it now. How unfair that we have to wait. And you guys, if you know, no spoilers here. So just run out and get your Supreme on. This is number two. I love this Cher Noble. Like her hair is so crazy. Like, what is this? I'm like, I'm wondering if this is also like a big influence of like the MTV era, like Beavis and Butthead and stuff. I don't know. It's just sort of giving me that. Oh, she's sort of uh, problematic circa 1941. And look at her belt buckle that hateful symbol. I've never enjoyed Nazi characters in comics, but there they are. I don't know why. It just has such an ick factor to me. I love this. He even did art for like the letters page. That's what we see. There's so many elements of comics are gone that just make comics so much fun. And not just having a letters page, but also having like letter page art on top of it. Images of Shadowhawk by Keith Griffin and Alan Grant. I wonder what that was about. I'm sure I had it. Maybe I'll find it in my collection. 1963. I'm embarrassed to say that I was never really on the 1963 tip. I might have a few issues, but I, it's probably one of those books that I need to go back and reread and like kill myself for not reading it. Freak Force, my beloved Freak Force. Here's Gen X and this was Gen 13. But of course, uh, it was too close to like Generation X and all the X books. So they were like, uh huh, uh, image guys, you can't just leave Marvel and do a bunch of X books. 
And then, and also interesting to note is his son, Jeffrey Scott. Um, I feel like J. Scott Campbell juggled around his name um, a little bit before settling on J. Scott Campbell. So inked by Alex Garner. They were such a great pair. I did really like Gen 13. I was sort of disappointed that it wasn't called Gen X. Maybe that's because I'm a Gen X or I don't know. Brigade, some fun Jeff Matsuda art there. Uh, never really, I mean, I collected Brigade. Now this was crazy. Can you imagine this freaking? and I'm sure I have it somewhere. I hope I do because the Shadowhawk like pull up cover. I mean, this has to be like the straw that broke the camel's back. I mean, just when you thought they had run out of gimmicks, that's actually pretty cool that they came up with that. Anyway, so that's my little Keith Giffen Trencher versus Superman comparison. Um, Jose Munoz was the artist that was that influenced Keith Giffen. If you want to feel like looking that up, anyway, thanks so much for watching. I truly appreciate it. Please uh, subscribe to my channel, hit like, share my content, and I'll bring you some more later. All right, thanks, guys.